we watched Unbreakable this week. Yes, we did. Is this the first time you've seen it? I couldn't remember if you said you'd seen it before or not. This is the first time that I've seen it. What was your opinion? Um, I like the concept. Yeah. And it, it was a little slow with like a really slow build up to a, a small payoff. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. In my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I liked it. I, I liked the idea of it, but it was, uh, I, I would have liked to see more. And le- I, I mean, unless Shamalang, Shama whatever his name is, <laughs> his not- intention was to <laughs> create a sequel, but not for 20 years. Yeah. Like, was he originally? I don't know. I can't imagine that was his original, like, one and done, right? Um, originally, I think it was just a single, a single movie. Because, well, then that was even more disappointing. Mm. We, uh, I, I want to see more. And so when I watched it the first time, I was in high school and I loved it. I was like, "This is the best movie ever. This is, this blew my mind. It was so really? intense." And I watched it this yeah. time, and I was snoozing. I was struggling to get through this movie. It was so slow, and like I was it's like, "Man, really slow. nothing is happening." And so when I finished it, I watched the behind the scenes, the making, and M Night said, "You know what? I really wanted to do with this movie is take the first act of a movie." And stretch it out over the course of an entire movie. And I was like, oh, yeah, that, no, yeah, yeah, that's what you did. That's why. They did the same thing with the Hobbit movies. It felt really, really slow. It didn't feel like anything was happening. And it just, like, it's shot really well. It's got a lot of, you know, really cool looking visuals. And, um, you know, the the quiet moments between the characters is pretty strong. But. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time to get through. Yeah. Okay. I, I get what he's saying. Then stretch out the first act over movie. Yeah. That's fine. If you intend to make a second act movie and then a third act movie, but that's not a good movie by itself. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I mean, it, it's interesting, right? Cause the, the whole idea of it was, you know, the first act of a movie of a superhero movie is a character finds out he's a superhero and learns what right. his powers are. And and then maybe like their first uh, act of heroism. Yeah. And I mean, that's what this was, right? That's exactly what they exactly. did. But man, it it really drug on. And uh, the because so he gets in the car or the train accident and then. um comes home and is fine then mr glass he's the only he's the only survivor of this accident yeah samuel jackson like 140 people or something died samuel jackson character gets a hold of him he's like hey i i need to talk to you about this accident i think i have information on on all of it and so just he says how many days have you been sick yeah he asks he starts asking him questions about how many injuries he's had how often he's been sick and it turns out that, well, in reality, he's never been hurt. He's never been sick. But they start, he's like, I think you might be a superhero, basically. And uh, Bruce right. Willis is like, uh, no, and bounces, then goes home and starts bench pressing with his son. And this scene I thought was interesting when I was younger. And this time I was like, who who doesn't check how much weight is on a bar? He's like, right. it's behind him. He's purposely not looking like he's just sitting there like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. You do it. You know, 10 year old son who's already messed me over once. I'm not going to check the (laughs) second time you do it. Like I get the once they start pushing it and start putting the paint cans on when they're both a part of adding it. But you never not check how much weight is on the bar. Like, yeah, if you're off by five pounds, you can like really mess up your shoulders. And so. Oh yeah, for sure. And I was just like, this is so unbelievable. Like every every uh coincidence was so forced that it was just so unbelievable. And I I was shocked by how little I enjoyed this movie this time through. 
Oh. Uh, so, uh, I just, I struggle with Samuel L. Jackson's motivation for anything. Yes. He wants, he's like so concerned with finding a superhero, right? Mm-hmm. That he's willing to kill probably at this point close to a thousand people. Yeah. Right? I mean he made a building we'll collapse. Find one guy. He made right. a train crash and was it a uh an airplane crash? Yes. Okay, but here here's my problem is with the with the numbers, right? Yeah. You're gonna kill that many people to find one guy who is more than likely not going to save that many people in his lifetime. <laughs> like that's a lot. Like the numbers don't add up to me. Like it's not like something that's gonna. Well, like, I mean, it the, balance out over time. The point wasn't for him to find a superhero to save people. He wanted to find a superhero to be his adversary. He wanted to be the Lex Luthor to Superman, but he needed to find Superman to be able to be Lex Luthor. I think if you want that, all you got to do is be Lex Luthor. And if there's a Superman, he'll show up. I, I don't know. Maybe. I, you can't force it. I worked and for also why? Be- Mr. Glass. Because he was called Mr. Glass? No, because he wanted purpose. He felt like, why, why am I like this? I need purpose. And that was how he, he found it. That's how he figured out what where his value is but it, it doesn't make sense it's dumb <laughs> no it's it's really dumb yeah. uh, also if i'm br- <laughs> now we're, we're gonna probably jump around a lot here yeah because well okay here we'll we'll, we'll just talk it through all right let's talk it through we'll, I'll, I'll have some more points at the end okay so bruce willis and, and i get being hesitant right like if you were never sick in your life, it's probably not something that you actually really think about until you're confronted with it, right? Yeah. Then you have to think back, like, oh, you know what? When was the last time I was sick? Or maybe never. But the car accident that he was in, yeah, right? Yeah, that didn't make he, any sense. It didn't. That was dumb. Do you, do you think he just thought it was a coincidence that he wasn't hurt, or? Well, the thing I didn't I mean, get, why was, did he lie about being hurt? To get out of playing football. Oh, he okay, didn't I want mean, to play that's football? his story. Yeah, okay, because I don't, so his I, wife mm-hmm. told Samuel L. Jackson that she couldn't be with a football player, right? Oh, uh, okay. Somehow I forgot that She part. said that when Samuel L. Jackson was having his physical therapy. That makes more sense. So yeah. he... He he used as he used that as an excuse to not play football, yeah. so he could then be with his wife. Gotcha. Which I get, that's fine. Why not just but play football? How? Well, there's that, but also, <laughs> if I'm if I'm like your coach, right, and I'm like, dude, yeah. this Bruce Willis kid is like my biggest star. He's gonna be great. Oh man, he's in this car accident. Uh, where? Wh- what injury did you get? Like. Tell me what's going on. Like, do you think you'll be able to play? Where's the doctors tell me? So, like, you're you're walking. Like, I don't. I, it's not make. It's not adding up to me. No. Like where this like light or this career ending injury is. He got because he got cancer from the car accident. Oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, then that makes sense. that makes more sense. The car accident cancer is the worst. Uh yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I I get the motivation behind it, but there was probably different ways to do it, or or at least it should have raised more questions. Well, so <clears throat> he does the bench press scene, right? Right. And I like that scene, by the way. Yeah, it, it's a cool idea, but it doesn't really add up to me logically when you consider all you have to do is look. No, it's you know, it's very careless for and, sure. And then you would be more aware of what he's picking up and what he's taking off. Like, I don't know. It just, I thought that was kind of dumb. Um, but the, uh, from there, he, he starts to believe that he is possibly a superhero and goes, uh, meets up with Mr. Glass again or calls him. Or no, no, 
he's at uh he's working and mr glass shows up samuel jackson shows up at the stadium and they're sitting there talking and he uh said he like gets a vision of a gun in a guy's waistband and he's like hey let's start patting people down and he's talking to glass and he's like if this guy's got a gun like i think he's got a gun he's gonna hop out of line watch and then the guy hopped out of line and so mr glass took that as proof or uh not proof but potential evidence that it's true and so he chases the guy down and ends up falling down the stairs and shattering all his bones because he's made of glass because he's made of glass and uh, i thought that was also i thought that was a, a, a pretty cool scene especially with the way it was shot with the uh shattering um cane cane mm-hmm. yeah i i liked i liked that part because it showed that yeah he was hobbling and he was like putting all of his effort in to catch this guy and then he was confronted with stairs obviously stairs has probably been an issue with him for his whole life yeah. and it, but he was so willing to like cost not what's uncautiously what's um, carelessly that's carelessly what I'm looking for. Yeah. speed down these stairs at, at risk of, of he, you know, falling and breaking every bone he has just to catch up with this guy to see if he's right. Like, he believes that much in it. Yeah. And what's the chances uh, you're going to see someone's hidden gun? Or yeah, like, if, I wanna, what, if he like, was fast enough to catch him originally, he's like, hey, 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 do you have a gun on you? Can I see your gun real quick? Does it have a silver and black yeah. handle? Like, that's a, it, it's not a well thought out plan. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I was curious as to what he was going to do had the guy turned around. Yeah, I don't. I I assume just ask, right? Do you have a gun? I don't know. So that was uh, interesting. So that is pretty much the last kind of last piece of evidence that he needs to believe that. Uh, What's his name? David? Uh, Bruce Willis's character? uh, David Dunn? David Dunn, is or, that right? Dunner, Dun, Dun, Dunnid, did it? Something, Dunnid, something along those lines. I want to say it's Dunn, Dennis but it, what is it? I don't. I just said Dennis oh. Donald. I know that's oh. not it. Uh, I want to say it's Dunn, say but I, I thought it was David a, Dunn. I thought it had a n on it or a ner on it. Dunner, 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 Dunner. Yeah, that's it. It's dinner. De Niro. <laughs> um anyways yeah so he's now glass is convinced he's like definitely 100 percent. he has to be a superhero that's why he's not getting hurt that's why all this stuff is happening um but he's now he's laid up <clears throat> and bruce willis yeah. goes to pick up his son is it it's his son right i was a little confused yes. about their relationship because he was talking about like I, I just felt like we were becoming friends and now I'm going to leave if you shoot me. No, the the kid definitely calls him dad lots of times. Yeah. But was were they not together for a while, him and his wife? No, it seemed like at the time of the accident, they had been not ne- maybe not necessarily separated, but I think they were sleeping in different rooms is what it looked like. Yeah, yeah. Um, no. And then he was looking for a job in New York so he could leave. Yes. And then the accident happened and kind of canceled everything. But his relationship with his son made it seem like he was never around his son while his son was growing up. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so that made me confused yeah, about his relationship with his wife. It seemed more like they'd split up and gotten back together and were splitting up again. But I feel like they didn't make that very clear. Oh, it was kind of ambiguous. Yeah. But so uh, yeah, glass gets shattered. And then something happens at the son's school where Bruce Willis has to come and check. There's a, That's right. Yeah, it was a there fight. There is a fight, but not a physical fight. No, something it is. Something is what the he, principal was saying. He, the son gets in a, like a fist fight with a couple of kids who are picking on someone else because he said, oh, you know, I thought since I'm your son, I would have powers like you. But yeah. Uh, before that, Bruce Willis is talking to the teacher, which is, this is another giant coincidence that 
every every single thing was so it was just a coincidence there was nothing yeah. like that felt natural it was like oh how how odd that your son's teacher is also the same teacher you had at school who would for some yeah. reason randomly out of nowhere bring up about the time where you almost drowned in the water like why would you why would you do that it's what's crazy to me is it it seems like realistically he would be the one to remember more than like the old person yeah you know? and it's not like he didn't remember the event because he could retell the, the the details so why didn't he i don't know that don't that know. was kind of weird to me yeah and then not only that not only could he not only did she remind him but he wait what am i saying I was, he, he is, uh, not only was it a coincidence that she reminded him, but when they, so they go home and then the son pulls out the gun and is getting ready to shoot Bruce Willis to prove that he's bulletproof. He says, you know, that boy that they were talking about who drowned in the pool forever ago, that was me. I can get hurt. Why was anyone talking about that accident that happened 20, 25, 30 years ago? It. yeah like it's not like you were talking about it in front of the boy or anything like that yeah it was it just happened to be brought up to you as if it was a thought that you hadn't thought about this thing since then right yeah but then all of a sudden like the story that everyone's talking about all the time <laughs> yeah yeah that was like that part <clears throat> was weird it's tragic right that a little kid almost drowned in a pool but he didn't die he was saved and it's been 25 years. No one is going to talk about that. The only reason the old lady talked about it was because it happened to him and it happened uh, while she was at the school. She's like, oh, I remember that well, time you almost drowned. It almost seemed like she was implying that it was extraordinary circumstances because he was there for like five, five minutes, minutes underwater. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. That That's the only reason. The only reason she even talked about it was because yeah. it affected both of them. There would be zero reason for anyone to talk about it outside of that personal connection. Like, well, the reason they talk about it is because everyone thinks that the kid that he died, and because she, she said they all talk about the boy who died, yeah, and we just let him think that to kind of keep him in line so they're safer. So they don't think that that kid lived. They think a kid did go to the bottom of the pool and he died. Yeah, it's still dumb. Oh, no, it's dumb for sure. The um um. I, I, the the scene w- at the kitchen table with the gun. Yeah, I, I thought that was pretty intense too. Yeah, even though I know that if he shoots him, like he's gonna be fine. It was I was still on edge all my life for that part. You wanted him to get shot. I thought he was gonna get shot. But I didn't know. <laughs> I I didn't know what was gonna happen. It was crazy. I wish he would have shot him, and then Bruce Willis just died, and then <laughs> credits rolled. <laughs> oh yeah. It's the beginning of the Sixth Sense. I was gonna say it's the it's the same as the Sixth Sense. But uh, oh man, that would have been crazy. So he he starts to believe, oh, I can get hurt because I almost drowned. So he starts changing his mind about being a superhero again. Goes to but work. also that but that's another thing, right? What does that prove that you? You, the fact is, you didn't drown after You'd, being yeah. there for five minutes. You were underwater for. If anything, a, that should go towards you, like being unbreakable or whatever. Yeah, no, it, it definitely should have been extra proof. Like, and, oh, and not you not were the only. It. You were the only survivor on this train crash that everyone died in. You also survived underwater for five minutes. Like, it doesn't make sense why that would be a sign that you're not like. You did something so, no one else can do. You're clearly special. So here's my yeah. Here's my question then. Yeah. Is he immortal? Can he not die? Because like being able to survive a car accident and a train accident, you know, being like physically strong, yeah, is one thing, but being able to live essentially, uh, you know, with water in your lungs is like a whole different issue. Yeah. I feel like I I don't know. They shouldn't have 
they, hmm. I don't know. That I'm not sure what exactly is his like status. Is he just well? This immortal? is kind of the issue with M Night Shyamalan movies is that they don't really make a lot of sense. The twist is more important than logic. Oh. And so they yeah, tell, it, they tell this, bummer. yeah, they tell this long story and build up all these things that are strictly coincidences just to try to blow your mind at the end. Like the a whole because thing he, he did with the water and signs. Out after Sixth Sense, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, or I don't know. It's all, it's all goofy, man. Like, it's just his style. It is he, his style. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. It sometimes it almost feels like he thinks of a twist ending, yeah, and then he builds his movie around that. No, that's fair. And he, I mean, does whatever he has to do to get to that point. Yeah, even if it doesn't make sense, and then even if by the time he's built a movie, that original twist ending isn't like effective anymore yeah i don't know it's so then after the gun scene he goes back to work yeah and he's like unsure about it a little bit at this point this might actually be out of order i I don't i don't know but uh he starts putting his hands out so people bump into him and he sees a vision of uh m night Shyamalan, the director being an actor getting drugs out of the bathroom and he walks up to him and is like, Hey, uh, let me pat you down. And the guy's like, what? Oh, come on, man. And he's like, just let me pat you down. And he pats him down. And there's nothing. And, uh, that was it. He's like, Oh, maybe I'm not a superhero after all. But right. It felt like M Knight's character was way too okay with that. Like that definitely would seem yeah. like racial profiling. Right. Well, maybe because he was guilty, he was he's just happy guilty. that he didn't get caught. Yeah, it's just like like uh, if you were smuggling something, and then it felt like some dude like picked you out of nowhere, and it felt racially motivated, but then he didn't catch you, you probably wouldn't put up a big fuss. You probably, oh, okay, thank you, I'm out of here. So you're saying it's fair that it was racially motivated? I don't think it was racially motivated, obviously, but I think that if now I can't speak for people of race. I don't know how to people of race. I can't. I don't. That's not a thing. Everyone's a people of race. Exactly. So I speak for everyone. All right. When I say that, if someone gets you, no complaining about racism, guys. Yeah, Ta- that's Taylor that's Nixon. my point. That's all I. <laughs> that's all I have. Um. Wait, what do you? What's your opinion of M. Night being in every movie he makes? Eh, I don't have a problem with it as long as it's like small. He stands out like a sore thumb. Like every time he's he, in there, I'm just like, why? Which is also you could have racist of you to say that. <laughs> um, it just feels unnecessary. It feels self-aggrandizing. It feels you know kind of pompous to put yourself in your own movie. And I get it. It's fine, but yeah. he, he's always kind of this, uh, not a critical role, but a uh, a turning point. A pivotal role, yeah. A turning point character, right? Yeah. In this, he like he moves things in a different momentum because now Bruce Willis doesn't think he's a superhero. In Signs, he's the reason why he Mel Gibson's wife Mel Gibson's dies. Wife. In yeah. Lady in the Water, he is essentially the hero because writers are the best thing you could ever be. Which was a stupid. I've actually not point. seen that one. I have it's no weird. It it's looked weird. really dumb to me. Uh, six, who was he in Sixth Sense? Ooh, was he in Sixth Sense? I'm sure he was. He's in every every single one. I think he wasn't in After Earth. I don't think. Isn't Sixth Sense his first movie? That is right. Uh, it was his first big one. I don't know if it's necessarily his first one. Okay, so let me think. It's been a while since I've seen that movie. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I, but yeah, I can't recall him being in it. Anyways, the ones that I do remember him in, he's always this turning point role. And yeah, it, the movies I feel would be way more effective if he didn't stand out in those roles. Like you see yeah. him, and you're like, oh, this is M Night. Like he's just in there because he's the director, not because he's a great actor, or convincing in this character. He's just 
wants to be in the movie. Which, again, yeah. I, I don't, I don't care about the desire to do it. It's just frustrating when it takes you out of a movie. Yeah. But so, so I want to move on to the scene where he's. I don't know. Is he at the train station? Or where is he when he's touching all the people? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a train station. So what is his power? He's able to see stuff that people have already done. Uh, it seems almost almost. It's useless. inconsistent. Yeah. He, uh, he sees the bad things people do. But they've already done them. Yes. Like, but, okay, I get he sees that guy kill the other guy, right? So now I, it before, just was a coincidence that he had also kidnapped everyone, kept the family hostage. Yeah. Like if they hadn't, he would have just walked in and there would have just been a dead guy. Yeah. I, I was a little confused with the M night moment when he sees him doing the drugs because mm-hmm. was that in the future? Can he see the future and the past? No, I think it was in the past. So he got the drugs and got rid of them and then got the ticket. That's because I was like, oh, maybe maybe he's getting a ticket and it's going to get inside and get drugs. Yeah, I I don't know. Like, it makes more sense. It's unclear. It makes more sense that it would be in the past, but it wasn't very clear to the point where I could understand what was happening. It's it's funny because then I was watching. So as I'm watching this, I was thinking, it's like, wouldn't it be kind of funny? If there's like a superhero, right, who thinks that he can see into the future. Yeah. And he keeps having these like flashes of things, and he keeps trying to prevent these crimes. Yeah. But it turns like, out that these are all things that it happened in the minority past, report. And, yeah, and he doesn't <laughs> know, and he's just like missing every crime. He's what? like staking people out that have already done a crime, and they're not doing anything else. Well, I think it would be funnier if he was just straight up wrong, that they never did the crime at all. <laughs> and just Bruce Willis killing <laughs> so people just, because so crazy. He, he's daydreaming these things. Oh, man. <clears throat> That'd be funny. But yeah, so actually, while at that train station, there's a theory, which I don't know how true it is. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that the lady he bumps into who is abusing her child. The boy. Yeah, I is, saw that. Uh, the guy from Split, Kevin, Kevin, what's his name? Um, Wim- I thought his name was like Win- Wendell Crumb. Yeah, Wendell Cr- Kevin Wendell Crumb. Uh, that's what I was, yeah. yeah so there's yeah, a theory yeah. that that's connected, but that feels unnecessary. Like, it doesn't really seem. No, like- see, again, what that is to me is him saying, okay, you know what? I'm thinking I want to do another movie in the same universe. Yeah. I'm going to pick out these random characters that I made in the first one because I need a connection. Yeah. And then I'm going to build my movie around, around that. that. Yeah. Well, because in Split, I mean, we'll get to it later, but the he Kevin's dad dies in the train crash. But do they say that? I thought they just say his dad left on a train. Um, maybe I, I heard that he died on the train crash. That's what I remember, but I could be wrong. I, I don't know if you're, you're cause I, I, I'm sure that I read the same theory as you about that being the mom and, and Kevin or whatever. And it's saying that it, it, it points to potentially his dad being on that train that he died. Yeah. But, but it's not like actually. Yeah. I might be getting clear the- if that's true or not. The theory the and theory. what happened in the movie confused, but I do remember in the movie split that they do say something, something train because his dad left on a train. Yeah. I but who knows? I'm sure <clears throat> yeah. that's, I'm sure that's what he's pointing to because he's M. Night Shyamalan. Yes. <laughs> it was. Um, but anyways, unbreakable. unbreakable. I just, his, he, if it really is, he can only see bad things that people have already done. That is so completely useless. Yes and no, right? Like, there's a lot of things that are going on concurrently. If you've already done them in the past, tax evasion. Oh. He could be the best okay. IRS agent in the world. That, this is true. Now, but at the same time, like I, th- I want to say, it's 
the first one or one of the first that he touches and it's they like drive by and like smash a bottle over someone's head yeah and then they say what go back, go back to, to your africa. country oh was it africa yeah they're being racist <clears throat> so that's that though like what are you gonna follow that guy forever until he he does it again does yeah, something you like have that to be again very confident in your powers to go attack that guy for doing that like i could see <laughs> you really like being effective for finding like potential serial killers right yeah but how many of those them. are there oh uh, who knows and and uh, everyone everyone is a potential serial yeah. killer i guess yeah uh, i don't know i just find it almost useless <laughs> almost I, there's I, I, there's definitely room for it to work right um especially he, when you're it, talking about a murder a system if you're talking about a murderer, you can. Well, I don't. I don't really know how he operates after this movie because in this movie, he finds the guy who killed the guy and then kidnapped everyone. He followed him yeah. back and saved the kids. But yeah, he, and so it worked he, out that time. If he was alerting the police to these people, he thinks is a is a murderer. That would be way more effective because then. Well, yes. Yeah, so that's can, what I was thinking. He they, should. They can yeah. find evidence and build a case against the guy versus him just showing up and punching the guy. You know what I mean? Like you're not, you're yeah. not going to be necessarily confident that you're right or that it's justified in what you're doing. But if you're like, Hey, I think this guy's a murderer. You should check him out. Police go and get all the evidence they need together and solve a case. That seems way more effective than showing up. Yeah. In a, so a I rain a slicker. Yeah, yeah. I like have a couple for, of things on that. So, for for the power ahead. sense, like making his power effective. Right. It would be better to work for the police or with the police, and then they can bring in a potential murder or just a, a suspect for anything and be like, hey, is this our guy? And he can touch him. But then that leads me to think, okay, he he doesn't get to choose what he sees. So yeah. what does he see? Does he just see the Dairy most Queen. recent crime? Does he see the like the biggest crime that guy's done? Like, what if someone murdered someone and then like on the way to escape they like jaywalked? Ooh. So then like he touched him, he's like, ooh, it's not a murder, but you got yourself a jaywalker for sure. Definitely not a murderer here, guys. Let him go. So Are you sure know, he's covered in blood? No, he's just a jaywalker. Don't worry. So I would have seen it. I would have saw it. <laughs> this guy just jaywalked. What do you think about uh, the fighting between Bruce Willis and this guy? So he shows up, right? And he finds the dead dad, sneaks around, frees the kids, finds the mom tied up, and uh, gets in a fight with them. Oh, wait, no. Before, before he gets in a fight with them, he's standing at the, the balcony just looking over the backyard, just looking at the pool, which has been established. Water is his kryptonite. Staring at a pool. Yeah. The bad guy shows up. Shoves but also, him. why? He survived in the water. It weakens him is what it is. Are you? He lived in the water for five minutes when he was I, a kid. I don't know, man. It's not. I didn't make this. If but anything, I'm, my, like, I'm super resistant to water. I feel like you're jumping over a dumb thing that happened of him just standing there because you're annoyed about water. Why was he just standing on the balcony when he knows there's a murderer in the house behind him? He's just like, that, oh, let me, me take too, in this view. And the guy just pushes him over the balcony. Also, yeah, I was what, like, a, what a terrible there, right? what a, what a terrible plan from the murderer. Like, yeah, you push him off the second story. It's going to hurt, but it's not going to kill into him. Into a pool. In, yeah. <laughs> into a pool, exactly. Like... The murderer is like, yeah, I took care of that. No worries. He fell on that tarp. Into a pool with a cover. So you have, you push him on a waterbed. <laughs> but what happens is the the cover falls in. And for some reason, he's just made of titanium because he just sinks straight to the bottom. <laughs> like After sitting there for like five minutes, not doing anything. Oh, man. But he's uh, drowning. He's definitely going to die. But then thankfully, the kids throw that pole in the water and then he shoots out of the water like a dolphin like he's got no issues once he's able to touch something solid why not touch the floor of the pool you can stand up that pool is only three feet deep yeah uh but yeah it so was he 
mind boggling. <laughs> he gets out of the water and goes in and fights the guy and chokes him to death. And I thought this fight scene was cool in some ways and not in others. It like it didn't really feel authentic to a fight scene, but the way they filmed it was pretty cool with especially with the stunts where the guys like slamming them against the wall and they did it all in yeah. one take. Like the technical aspects of the fight scene were impressive. The excitement aspects of the fight scene were kind of boring. Yeah, so here's another question. So is one of his powers like strength? Because it doesn't seem to be like super yeah. strength. It's just like well, strong because he kept there's people in the world who can bench three six hundred pounds. Six hundred even. So yeah, yeah three hundred so, pounds is not is uh is strong, right? Most people can't bench three hundred oh. pounds. For but sure, but it's three hundred pounds for someone who, yeah, three hundred pounds for someone who works out regularly is not that much. Like that's a that's a pretty attainable goal for almost anyone if that's what they want to do, male or yeah. female. Like yeah. you, you'd have to work really hard if you're really small. But it's not like wow, you're the most amazing person. I can't believe you can bench three hundred pounds. No, you, anyone really can do it, it with some exceptions. Um pretty sure the mountain from game of thrones could do that like no problem yeah he does it for reps i'm sure oh yeah no yeah the he, the world he, record he, that's what he he curls the world record bench press without a without any support type suits because they're you have special suits that like make it easier to do it they like hold your muscles yeah. tighter uh without anything it's like over 600 pounds that's insane yeah so he should have been benching like two thousand pounds to show that he's a superhero, right? But that it just—I don't know. I feel like I feel like M Knight is a not. I don't mean this to be an insult, but he he seems like a small, frail person. So maybe three hundred pounds <laughs> seems like a huge number. Ass. Yeah, like and I'm not he's trying. He's like, to, I bet no one can bench three hundred. <laughs> I'm not like trying to pick but on him or anything. No I just. Just a observation. Boy. I think three hundred pounds seems unattainable to him when it's it's not really that much, you know. Yeah. Um, He's probably like I can bench one fifty, so <laughs> I'm gonna say superhero can do twice that much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so he he ends up killing the guy. He's a he's a murdering superhero. Yeah. Now. Also, here's the thing. Mm. Cops show up. How are you going to explain why you followed this guy? And <laughs> he got how out of is there. any of that going to make sense? He got out of there. Oh, that's true. That's right. They're, okay. That's yeah. The kids, right. the kids gave like they a described him. described him. Yeah. And his okay. rain slicker became the uh, symbol of his heroics. Yeah. Oh, one of the, one of the things that we skipped over, I meant to bring up was when Samuel L. Jackson was like, why do you think you got into the profession of helping people? You want to be a, you want to protect people. The dude's a security guard at a, <laughs> at a stadium. At stadium. He's not protecting anyone. My wife, he was like, you could have been a biologist. You could have done, done this or that. I'm like, no, because those either require money or you have to be smart or you need special skills. This is like, hey, it's the only job I could find. <laughs> yeah like the <laughs> he made it sound like he i want to go into the business of helping people yeah That's protecting people security guard and yeah again there's nothing wrong with being a security guard but like to put so much value on that as like oh wow this is a sign that you're a superhero and i couldn't tell i couldn't tell if that was earnest or if that was samuel jackson a sign of samuel jackson being disconnected with reality right i didn't know what the point no, was he was just really reaching for for something to make sense or absolutely is m Knight a crazy person for thinking being a security guard is a sign of someone who wants to protect people because i think i feel no. like without trying to be harsh i feel like a security guard is more of a sign of someone who wanted to be a cop but couldn't do that yeah uh, pretty much that's i think that's kind of the the general consensus uh I think Samuel L. Jackson is just 
a movie version of real life M. Night Shyamalan. Okay. That's a, that's a theory. I don't know if it's a good one, but it's definitely a theory. Why do you say that? As, as far as that goes, as far as his thinking goes. Okay. He just thinks like him because Samuel Jackson or M. Night wrote for him. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so overall, what did you think of Unbreakable? Good, bad, happy, saw it. Um, I mean, I'm glad I'm. I, I'm glad I saw it. I I don't know why I never watched it before. Yeah, probably would have enjoyed it a little bit more. Uh, pre Marvel days. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, it's nice to to have a a superhero type movie where it's not tied to anything else. It's like its own well, universe. That's cool. It was nice. Yeah. Um, I, if we're, if we're rating it on the scale of negative five to five, I'll probably give it like hmm, a one, maybe a two. Yeah. I think but a two is I, fair. I'm not going right? to give it a higher than a two. Um, yeah, because it's really slow. Everything that happens, the whole movie, every all the information could have happened in 30 minutes. It like his his um premise of making a movie that's only focused on the first act of a superhero movie is a interesting idea, but you have to add more content than just what you would put in the first act of a full length movie. Like I, it, exactly. it just feels like he took 30 minutes and stretched it out to an hour and a half or two hours. I don't even, this was this two hours. This felt I really I think it long. was like an hour and 45 minutes. Okay. Uh, it felt really long and I don't hate slow movies. I don't hate quiet movies. I don't hate movies that spend a long time building tension between the characters, but you have right. to have a really strong payoff. And I, I don't feel like that landed because the end of the movie, uh, Bruce Willis shows the, the newspaper article to his son and his son starts crying because he's like, I knew it. I knew you were a superhero, but he like tells him to like, be quiet. Don't let your mom know he's going to keep it a secret. And like, that was the, the wrap up. It was just like, okay. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, it's fine. Like, it's good movie, but I, uh, I'll, I'll probably never watch it again. Unfortunately, um, because I, I bought it to watch it this time. <laughs> ooh, yeah, mistake. But that's all right. Yeah, I probably won't watch it again. Uh, I, unless no, I can't see in a, a situation where I would. Um, um but I do. <laughs> there are two more things I want to talk about okay. real quick. Yeah. The first one being when he's in the comic book store mm. and he's making that dude push him out and he just keeps like <laughs> jamming him, to, <laughs> yeah, jamming what, him to the side. What do you think? What was <laughs> it, what was, I, I didn't understand any of that scene, but I thought it was so funny. I Yeah, well, I didn't get the reason behind all that. Like, Because he's just sitting in the back of a comic book store, not doing anything, just being kind of creepy. And... Yeah. Uh, that's it. Then the guy tries to push him out and Samuel Jackson just is being difficult. Like he's like his whole life view is shattered because he thinks Sam or Bruce Willis is not a superhero. Right. At that, at that point in the story. Right. But then he finds a comic that. I, well, what, I don't even remember what the it, comic was. What, what I want to say it was like century man or something. Yeah. It, I don't know. Is that real? Is that a real one, or do they make it up for I don't, this? I don't. I don't think so. Because they had drawings of actual comics, like Batman, Superman, you know, all that on the walls when he was selling yeah. them. And so it's just, I don't know. It's oh, very. Confusing. You know what? Actually, another thing I want to bring up. What was the whole point of like the opening like wording when they're talking about comic book collectors and like the prices of these comics and how many they collect in their lifetime. What on earth was the point of that? Yeah. I, I kind of had a problem with how many they said comic book collectors, 3,600 and something comic books. Yeah. That seems like a lot of comic books. <laughs> that That's, and, and they said the average comic yeah, the book average. collector. <laughs> yeah. That's insane to me. Yeah. That's, uh, 
like how long would that take you say you buy <sighs> let's say five comics a month right that seems seems reasonable maybe let's let's just do well, 10 let, let's... 10 10 is easy right 10 comics a month over the course of a year as 120 comics goes into 3600 would be um 120 uh, I think you're thinking three, way too high. I'm 30 thinking years. Four a month is reasonable. That's one a week, right? Yeah, but people buy more than For, one at a time. And they, they come out. Uh, yeah, those are more than I would say that's more than average. But I'm saying, let's say, let's say you buy 10 in a month. It would take you 30 years of buying 10 comics a month for... Uh, yeah, for 30 years to get 3,600 comics collected. That's a long yeah. time and a lot of comic books. Yeah. But whether that's true or not, what mm. was the point? It, it didn't have, it didn't, it was dumb to me. It was just to lead into Glass's story. But it, it I didn't. don't need to know that information. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, they established it pretty established well. established him as a comic book fan. I don't think his whole life is based on <laughs> I don't, his comics are real. I don't know if it was like a <laughs> a stupid. pre pre defense towards um how much money he was selling them for cuz he's selling all the original sketches in his art gallery. Right. And uh I don't know if they're like well we need to establish that people enjoy comic books and that people buy comic books. So this is here's some like statistics. I did like when he told that guy, "No, you can't buy this," because he was going to give to his He's son. He's going to give to his son. Which yeah. also, that dude was dumb. The kid is four years old. What on earth is he going to do with that? Well, I mean, he's just going to put oh, it on the wall. Man. He's just going to decorate the kid's room. It's not like he's going to hand it to the kid to color in. I didn't like none of it made Here, sense. Here, fill this in. Yeah, like yeah, no, I, I, it was it was funny though. That just was more of a. This is how much he cares about comics. No, I know, but even that he didn't make it. sense because, again, like he wasn't giving it to the kid to like play with, right? Like, so say the guy bought a uh, a comic, like an actual comic book, right? Like, say the first edition, whatever, like whoever you right. want to say, Spider Man, Superman, whatever, like a, a really valuable book, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm getting this for my four year old. He loves Spider Man. I was like, ah, yeah. right, you know what? He's going to destroy that. I don't want to sell that to you. Like, I don't, the, the value of this being intact is worth more than you giving me money for it. I'm not, I'm not selling it to you. That I could, I could yeah. follow, right? But if it's a framed picture, it's just going on a wall. That's, that's very yeah, different. Yeah. Oh, so my last point that I want to bring up, mm. and now obviously, I, I don't know. I guess maybe you can consider it foreshadowing for the future movies. No, uh, but there I don't is something that foreshadowing. So there's something that Samuel Jackson's mom says to Bruce Willis. Yeah. Uh, that, that right up there at the end basically says, or she says, there's two kinds of villains. There's the the strong, powerful monster type of villain that you have to like physically fight. And then there's obviously these aren't her exact words, but whatever. And then there's the kind of villain that will fight you and defeat you with their mind. With their mind, yeah. So I don't know. Does that foreshadowing to the third movie? Oh no! Where, I mean, it's it's not foreshadowing at all. It's just revealing what Glass was doing in this movie. Yeah, but then it's it's going to show that in the third movie, isn't he going to technically be fighting both? Yeah, but he, in this one, so what that, that conversation was, it wasn't about foreshadowing anything. It was about revealing to Bruce, or Bruce, to, uh, uh, you want a first name basis with Bruce? Yeah. (laughs) To Bruce Willis's character that Samuel Jackson was the bad guy. And so in her saying, oh yeah, he, he, you know, bad guys use their mind. They're not all strong. Those are the most dangerous ones. It wasn't so much about like, oh, in the future, he's going to fight him. It's he's already his enemy. Like that's he's the one he needs to be worried about because he's so dangerous because of his mind. And that's when he goes back to talk to him. And Mr. Glass is like, I think it's about time we shook hands. 
and then Bruce Willis sees everything he did and then runs off and tells the police, but it's just in text, like like a documentary, and uh, that's the end of the movie. I hated that ending, the yeah. that text ending. He went on to call the authorities. Yeah. <laughs> it was just... Also, what was the deal? <laughs> Whenever he would touch someone, it's like he was seeing their their what their crimes mm-hmm. through like security footage, like yeah, up yeah, in yeah, the yeah. corner of a room. Yeah, the point of view. The point of view was like uh, <laughs> the camera was following him around like a video game or something. Oh, it was, and it was always fixed on. But see, it's it wasn't even necessarily showing the crimes. Because the one in the airport was just like, okay, obviously he had done something to sabotage the plane, right? But what we saw was just the people sitting in the in the the lobby or you know, whatever the airport area is, like looking out the window. Yeah. So he's just seen Samuel Jackson sit there and then get up and leave. Yeah. Well, he, he figures and- it out because he was at all those locations, and then he has all the things on the wall uh, all the news clippings and all that stuff but no no I, I i get i get that but why is it why not show us that he's sabotaging the plane or because it showed him getting off the subway or the train you know so it's like oh he was there he did something and uh, but i don't know it's i don't it's it's showing two different types of things yeah it could have either show him causing these accidents or him watching these accidents, you know, like it could have been him watching the train, the train crash yeah. and the, you know, all the other stuff. It was just weird. Yeah, no, it, was, it kind of failed on that visual storytelling point because uh, it was a little lazy because it, if it would have been yeah, point of view, good. which it should have been right, like it really should have been right. through their eyes is what Bruce Willis sees. Um you wouldn't really understand what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so they're like, Oh, let's put it from a sky high view. And then the viewers will get it better. Also shout out to the lazy train driver who (laughs) he's like, Hey, you can't be in there. Hey, you're not supposed to be in there. What are you doing? (laughs) And then the train blows. "Eh, I'm sure it's fine. (laughs) Also, what did he do? What did he do to the train to make it crash? I don't know. I wonder if he put a bomb or something in it. Well, you see a clip of the, they like go over the train, right? At some point and show all the destruction. The, they weren't blown up. They just like crashed into each other. And I feel, but he could have put like a bomb, like in the, no, I understand driver's seat or whatever. I, I understand that. My point is if a train crashes, the effect in the back of the train is going to be very similar, no matter what type of accident happens at the front. So why was it so devastating throughout the whole train? Cause I feel like trains crash and people survive, but like no, almost no matter what happens, if a train crashes, the effects are going to be similar. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like, Oh, you had a, it was almost, a really bad car accident and you flipped over 10 times versus a fender bender. It's like if a train crashes, right. it's pretty much crashing the same way every time, depending on the speed, obviously. But like, yeah, I don't, yeah. And I guess it was almost implying from when the doctor was asking him questions at the beginning that whatever car he was on, it was probably completely just like mangled so badly because the doctor was in disbelief that, anyone could have been in that car and survived. Yeah. And well, everybody died. It was like 177. No, that was a train number. I don't remember how many people died, but a ton it was of like people 141 died. 141 or something. Yeah. A lot of right. people. No, and I get died. that, but it was, but it was something about his car because the doctor asked him, was like, well, are you sure you didn't like get up and go to a different car? Cause obviously maybe he's like, maybe if this guy was in the very back I could see someone surviving, but the fact that you're saying you're in this car, there's, it's, there's no way anyone could have survived that yeah. specific one. I don't know, but uh, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's <laughs> well, all I got. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it for unbreakable. I think it's, uh, unbreakable. 
<laughs> um, that that was going through my head the whole movie, and it was driving me crazy that I couldn't stop thinking about that. So if you're currently watching this on Twitch, we're going to continue our conversation talking about Split. If you're watching this on YouTube yeah. or listening to the podcast, the, our conversation about Split will come out next week. But thanks for listening. You can follow us on uh, Twitter at I Seen That Pod. Like us on Facebook, and uh, we'll be back soon. Or follow us on MySpace. On MySpace, Friendster, um, LinkedIn, anywhere you can find us at, follow us.